This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special, special guest today is a talented singer-songwriter out of Chicago, Illinois. His name is Barry Fontenoy. Mr. Fontenoy, how are you doing today, sir? Doing well. Doing well. How about yourself? I'm fantastic, man. Uh, welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Thanks for having me. Um, you have a uh, new single out called Rose, which, by the way, it's... Um, we're going to talk about that, but I, I just love it. Thank you very um, much. And then you also have an album coming out, I believe, on this month on the October 19th. I do, yeah, The Great Extreme. Okay. It's our first uh, full-length album, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. And, um, well, we'll get into all that. Uh, but before we do, um, tell us about Barry uh, Fontenoy. Uh, well, uh, I suppose I'm, so I was born in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, family's from Opelousas, Louisiana. Been there for a hot second, but they're kind of a, you know, so I was raised by country folk in the city. It was a cool, a cool experience. I think I got a kind of a blend of the two, the two vibes, but ultimately uh, I wound up moving to Arkansas in my early school years. Stayed there for about 10 years, except for one year when I went to military school in Missouri. And then, <laughs> sorry, I kind of went all over the place school-wise, <laughs> kind of ran the gamut there. But in any case, I, w I wound up moving to Chicago a lot more recently after, after undergrad. Uh, I moved up to Chicago for, to study immigration law for a minute. And then uh, just kind of met the band and things wound up progressing. And uh, yeah, we, start, we started producing music. I, I, I had done some music back in Arkansas. I, I was in choir on and off through school. And I started a band out in Arkansas during which process I'd, I'd written a few songs and I came to Chicago with those songs finished. But I didn't, have, I didn't know anyone. I didn't have a band or anything. And just, I kind of, I don't know, I did open mics throughout the city until just kind of through serendipity, I met all the people in the band with one notable exception, that being Amir Hainir, who's the keyboardist. And he, uh, I met him through Craigslist. <laughs> so <laughs> just complete, completely random the quantum fates brought the bands together and i basically just got lucky at every step of the way okay um now we sh i guess we should mention that the band is called barry and the fountains that's correct yes it's a name i swear to god i did not choose <laughs> i'll ask you about that later too but I'm, I'm gonna get into that later um but getting back to your um your childhood um did you come from a musical family? In a way, so I came from a from uh, and a non-musical branch of a family that has some musical people in it. I don't know if you're familiar with the the sort of Louisiana-based style of uh, kind of swamp blues called Zadiko. Well, my cousin, uh, my cousin Clifton Chenier was kind of one of the big names in Zadiko, and my and Clifton Jr. is kind of the He's another Zadiko sort of superstar, and I'm related to those guys. But my musical development kind of was a, was an independent phenomenon to the extent that I don't know that uh, CJ Shinya and I have met during my whole adult life. But <laughs> he's a, he's a, you know he's in Berwyn every once in a while. I think we'll, we'll probably play a show together one of these days, and that'll be when we actually meet <laughs> as adult men. But yeah, so I am to some extent from a musical family, but. I'm uh, from a non-musical branch. Okay. The reason I ask is because when I listen to uh, your music, um, and it's funny that you mentioned uh, Jonico out of, uh, out of Louisiana because your music is um, sort of reminiscent of that, but also some of the um, some of the music from the like the seventies. Um, it's a very um, very rich uh, sound. 
Um, and so that's why I asked about your upbringing because you don't hear that uh, type of music or style of music often. Um, so that's why I mentioned that, but. Absolutely, yeah, I think it's like it, the, the style of music we were going for in the Great Extreme and Cleo and Rose in particular was very, uh, it was, it, so it was retro in the sense that it was like, I think I, think I wear my influences on my sleeve. Like you can kind of see, like the, there's a lot of Otis Redding, a lot of Sam Cooke, a lot of the a lot of the Deep Soul kind of Muscle Shoals crowd, some Chess records, because of pretty clear Motown influences and stuff like Cleo, and uh, I think a lot I think a lot of it, uh, you know, the, the old soul influence. I, I that like the Great Extreme was about kind of sending up those influences to some extent, and obviously, well, I don't think I didn't want us to be too close to any particular model because I did want it to be kind of expressive of the broader range of what I, of the things that influenced me in moving in my move towards creative, towards creative work. But I didn't want it to be anything like, I didn't just want to bite somebody's style. I wanted to do something that, uh, that paid respect to the kind of people who on whose musical shoulders I'm standing without being something that was a clear extension of their work, which is why the great extreme is so retro in its, in its style. Okay. Have you, uh, cause you mentioned before that, um, you have belonged to a couple other bands. Did yeah. you always do that style of music? Well, initially I did classical music. I was a, I was a choir boy. <laughs> so I did a lot of that sort of stuff. And then, uh, after my first year of undergrad, I'd kind of left centenary college, uh, under a cloud. I, I wasn't the best student. In undergrad. <laughs> you know, I'll be, be candid about that. But uh, while I had paid very close attention to music, I hadn't paid very close attention to any of the other aspects of being in college at the time. So uh, I did a, I did, so I focused a lot on classical music then. And then uh, when I moved to Arkansas again, when I went back to the University of Arkansas, I did, uh, or at, a, at community college in the area, I did um, Jesus Christ Superstar, the musical. And that was like the first time I'd done sort of lead rock vocals in a performance setting. So I was like, wow, this is kind of a cool thing. And one of the people who was in the band for that school band, uh, Matthew Mazzoni, he's a great guitarist uh, based out of Louisville. If anybody knows him in the audience. But uh, I worked with him and formed my first band, uh, Barry and the Hurricanes. And we did a lot of, uh, like we were, we were pretty much a Motown cover band back then. So we did... Like that was what that was the basis of the format. Like the Barry and the, it was supposed to be like an homage to Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, and that sort of stuff. But then as uh, as we developed, I started uh, I started writing my own stuff. Uh, when I was in 2013, I think was when I wrote my first song. It was called uh, Desiree. It's on the album. But I um, I was drunk and bleeding at the time, and I, <laughs> I had kind of. Uh, I was meant to be learning Spanish. Uh, the Spanish teachers and I, they, everybody was relatively young. It was an immersion course. So we were doing our, our, late, se our late session class <laughs> and we all, went to, we all went to a bar and we were supposed to talk in Spanish and that would be the basis on which we would call it a lesson. So, <laughs> so we went to the bar, we, we got well, pre pre fairly, fair, like we, we were pretty drunk by the, time, by the end of it and I was wandering home. And uh, I knocked a bottle of cologne off the shelf. Uh, this is this is all built into something, I promise. <laughs> knocked a bottle of cologne off of the shelf. I was sleeping on a futon, and in that I kick in my sleep, and I don't clean places well when I'm drunk. I left a shard of I left a shard of glass on the ground, kicked it, woke myself up. Long story short, uh, I needed to make sure that, that wasn't going to become a problem, so I stayed up for a couple of minutes and. You know, I'd been working around. I had been working around with a couple of fragments of songs before, but just I don't know that that free moment, and I guess the fact that I was just in a in a particularly vulnerable mood anyway, kind of inspired me to write my first song, like to really construct a song intentionally, and that was uh, that was the birth of Desiree, and that kind of that really started it all for me. Okay, and you said that is on the upcoming album. It is, yeah. That's going to be it. That's on the uh, on the great stream. Okay, um, and then you said from there you moved to Chicago. I came up to Chicago, yeah, here in around 20, 2016, 2017, I think. Yeah. 
why um why Chicago versus New York, LA or someplace else? Uh, I got a full ride here. Okay. <laughs> I was like, let's go, let's go where I don't have to pay any money to go to law school. So <laughs> I came up to Chicago and it happens to fall in love with the place. Okay. And it's just, I don't know, there's something about it. I, I've really grown attached. Okay. And uh, you said law school. What law school did you uh, did you go to? Chicago Kent. Okay. Got it. And up there, studied immigration law. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, it, was, it was a relevant subject. <laughs> right, 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 yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so tell us a little bit more about how you and the uh, the fountains got together. So we went to, we, I, I, I initially, so the, there are a lot of independent venues around Chicago that were, that put on sort of open mics that, that uh, really did a lot for, to kind of foster the musical community in town. Uh, one of them was Gallery Cabaret, and uh, that was where I met a lot of members of the group, like Jake Cavalier, who plays guitar. I met uh, Julian Daniel through somebody who I knew at the Gallery Cabaret. I met, uh, I think the only current member, I met Dylan Harris, who plays bass on the, who plays bass on the record. Uh, he's out in Wisconsin right now, but he's, you know, he's still part of, part of the group in spirit, of course. And... Uh, I met Amir through, as I said, I met Amir, Amir through Craigslist, but it was kind of all just, essentially, I like there, I didn't know anybody in Chicago and I didn't have the, the, the good sense to, to feel nervous about going out and, and just being vulnerable in that way, just kind of going, going out and putting it out there. And I just kind of, I don't know, I kept playing and people like for some reason that seems to resonate with with a couple of uh, kindred spirits and we, I don't know, we, were, we came together and I think we, we managed to produce something pretty, pretty dang good considering we did it all ourselves. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I was, uh, was pretty impressed really. Yeah. Uh, like I said, cause you don't hear that, that style of music, um, too often. Um, getting, let's get back to, uh, Rose and let, let me ask you, is this, this upcoming album, is this your, this your debut album? Mm-hmm. This is yeah. This is the first uh, the first album I've produced. Uh, like we've got, I've I've done a couple of uh, recording sessions with various groups that I've worked with before, but this is my first full length album. Uh, this is definitely this is the, our first outing as Barry and the Fountains. This is a a lot of firsts kind of all at once here. <laughs> yeah. All right, I got to ask you before we start talking about the music, the name. Um, I said your sound is kind of. <laughs> But the name is kind of a throwback to Mary and the Fountains. Uh, oh yeah, it's it's a direct sort. Of, so we were talking initially about we wanted to we wanted it to be a send up to sort of Motown things. We we knew it had to be Barry and the something, uh, <laughs> but, but we needed the right noun, and we just couldn't think of any. So <laughs> ultimately, Amir Amir pointed out that my name means fountain in French. So, so we were like, let's just call it Barry and the Fountains. And I, I, of course, objected pretty strongly initially, but the fact that, like, uh, the name sort of grew on me over time, <laughs> just as it became the brand, but it definitely took a, it took a little bit of getting used to, for sure. Okay. Um, okay, so let's, let's talk about Rose. Um, did you guys, you guys all wrote that yourselves? You didn't work with any other uh, so, producers of any kind, or did you produce it yourselves, or? That was one. So Rose and generally the great, the great extreme was an album that was comprised primarily of songs that I had written before I came to town. And I'd written them strictly in the context of being like an acoustic singer songwriter. But when I got here, I just met like the people, like the people I met just, they vibed so, so perfectly with the song with it. Like they, they all did a great deal of work arranging their own parts. And we kind of collaboratively created this new, this new interpretation of the sound. But yeah, Rose was uh, Rose was initially kind of an acoustic reggae ballad. And there are still recordings of that version. I may release some later on as singles, but uh this this is the <laughs> this is the version that is the culmination of our collaborative effort for sure. Okay. And um quickly, how many how many members are in the band in the band? We have kind of a rotating cast sometimes. I think we have uh so our main, our, our core is around five people. It's, it's me, uh, 
Julian Daniel, who plays drums, uh, Morris Human, who plays bass, uh, Jake Cavalier on guitar, Amir Hainier uh, plays keys, and he's the producer of the album as well. And uh, we've had we've had a couple of other group. Uh, we've had a couple of other members. As I say Dylan Harris uh, plays bass for us. Uh, played bass for us on the album. Uh, we had David Allen Thrift come in and play some uh, play some guitar with us. So we have a we have a rotating cast. Sometimes we have uh, sometimes we have horns. Sometimes we don't. <laughs> it's kind of a, it's it kind of depends on the nature of the show, and just the the vicissitudes of the <laughs> the Chicago music scene. So one never one never knows exactly how it's difficult to coordinate the schedules of quite so many people all at once. And as a as a more fluid project, we like to have a, a sound that can kind of adapt to that. Just if something happens, or that rather that has been the case. Now, as a more established project, we're a lot more we're able to more consistently kind of create create a more a more tailored sound. Like for a particular show, we'll have. A, like if we if we're doing a smaller set, it might just be me and Jake, and I'll do rhythm guitar, and Jake will do and Jake will do lead guitar, or we might have a uh, you know we'll, we'll have a customized setup depending on the situation. Okay, but I think broad, broadly we're a full band plus. Gotcha. Um, so Rose, tell us, uh, tell us about that that particular song. Rose is a so Rose was one that uh. I'd, I'd written initially as a, as a love song, but then it kind of, it developed into being, I don't know, I want to I say it's more about, uh, it's, it became more about loneliness more broadly. So it, in, in, its, in, its over, in its overarching tones, it's about, it's about the, a relationship with a person named Rose. And obviously it was initially based on a relationship that I had, but I, I changed the names to protect the innocent. And then after that, it started getting more and more abstract. And I was like, well, let's keep it abstract. Let's, let's keep the framing of a love song, but also use this to ask questions about things that aren't necessarily strictly based around a relationship that aren't strictly relationship based. So let's use, let's use the actual relationship I had as a metaphor, basically. Okay. And with the album um is there a particular theme to the album um is there a story you're taking us from you know, single one to how many singles are, i mean how many songs are on the uh, on the album on the album i believe we have let's see so it's desiree rose Cleveland. so the out al the album i believe is six songs six songs and then we have uh, then we had a couple songs that were on the album initially. Uh, Rose and Cleo were going to be on the album, but we decided to produce a seven inch with those two. And uh, I don't know this. So the initial project, so the initial the initial concept. I think all of it, all of these songs were written. They they weren't written as a concept album. Which okay. this, the new album that's coming out is a concept album, and that's going to be based around Sumerian mythology. Uh, but this this album that we're that we're producing that we're releasing here in a little while is about uh, I don't know it's it is it's a de I suppose it's it's the broader story of my having deconstructed a lot of the relationships that made me who I am so in that sense like the great extreme is is about that binary transition from not create from not being a creative to becoming a creative from keeping my emotional life entirely within myself and being open with it, be using it as a tool to advance my, my, my ability to communicate with others, to be of service to them. So I suppose uh, the great extreme is the story of my using my, using my uh, difficulties in communicating with people to become a better communicator. Okay. And to be better at loving people, like using love stories to become a person more able to to love unselfishly. Okay. Uh, just listening to you, man, I can tell you are a, uh, you're a thinker. <laughs> oh, shit. I don't know about all that, but I, I certainly get tied up in here. Um, how, um, okay, so Rose is already out, correct? It is. Uh, okay, how long does that, how long has that been out? That's been out for a year, about, about a, like a week. I think, a week. Yeah, it came out, uh, I think, last Wednesday. I believe. Okay. And what has the um, what has the the reception been? Uh, I know it's only been a week, but how's it going thus far? People seem to like it. I'm quite I'm very pleased with the reception. I think uh, 
you know, obviously right now, usually the, the measure of that sort of thing would be going out and like doing a show and seeing how it affected the draw. But obviously right now, one can't do that sort of thing. You right. can't go out and do a show. That aspect of the line of work, we can't do. So we've been using, we've been using COVID as, a, as an opportunity to kind of draw inward and produce new content. So we've had we've we, we got the got the album out. We we'd finished the album a little while ago. Like we had that done roughly at the beginning of the year. This like we were planning to start work on the on the concept album, which is our next project. But unfortunately, COVID kind of scattered us and kept us from meeting up together. Right. But more recently, we've been able to kind of start, you know, not playing shows out, but getting together, doing more recording, kind of getting into the into into a more productive mode and i think i think it took us a while to find our post-covid kind of stream but i, th I do think we've got a working a sort of working pattern together that's going to be a lot more successful for us than just not doing anything <laughs> are you guys planning to do like um facebook live or ig live to to really uh, get the word out Absolutely, yeah. We've been very, we've been very active on our Instagram page in particular. We've been uh, putting out pretty consistent content, uh, be it videos or recordings of the songs. We've been keeping people updated about our new projects, and I've been posting little little vignettes from the concept album, even though the the songs, the, even though the concept album itself is not. I've been trying to to kind of get the content out there because I think we're we're planning to probably release it just on account of the fact that COVID is kind of uh, keeping us out of the, the performance mode that we like to be in. We're planning to use that, uh, we're planning to, to, to release the songs uh, sequentially again. Like instead of releasing the album all at once, we're gonna release some singles and then eventually we're gonna release the compilation just because, you know, on, like we, we, we can't produce as much content as we used to. Right. And obviously we were going to record it all at once before. Now that's become something of a liability. So we're going to have to be very creative about the way we, we get this recording together since most of us, you know, we're, we're like, we're all independent musicians. So a lot of us have other jobs. Like I know Jake Cavalier who plays guitar. He's a, you know, he works in some capacity that's connected to, uh, to producing masks for essential workers. Like people are out, people are out doing jobs to, uh, drummer julian he's a teamster you know everybody's out there kind of grinding on the front lines and they're also trying to produce like to do all this cultural work as well and it's i don't know consistently inspired by those guys okay uh, a couple questions here um how long have you guys been a band <clears throat> i suppose since around yeah early 2018 i'd say okay no, we started. So as I said, we've we've had a kind of a rotating cast. Uh, Dylan Harris, who played uh, who played bass with us in the beginning, he was on the, he was on the roster, but he's more recently moved out to Wisconsin. And Morris Human, uh, Morris Human has been playing bass with us more uh, more often these days. I don't know. We've but, but we started we started working together as Barry and the Fountains. Barry and the Fountains came to be in early 2018. Uh, it was it was kind of a we knew that we wanted to play music together and I had songs that were, that were kind of in, in a position where we could theoretically all, all learn them and play them. But we didn't have, uh, apart from the fact that we knew that we were going to be soul musicians, we didn't have a specific vision for what our project was going to end up looking like. And I think to, that to some extent that was a benefit because we didn't go in there with any preconceptions about what it was going to have to be in the end. So we were able to work creatively and freely kind of just, I think, I think as an independent project, something that we, you know, we didn't have outside financing. It was something that like most of it I paid for. And we were able to kind of be able to just, to just do it. I think because we were, we were able to sort of roll with the punches. Like we weren't in a position where we were like, it has to look like this or else it's not going to work. We were like, let's, let's be ourselves. Let's do, let's create uh, for, let's create synergy by performing together, by being organically a band. And, you know, in that we're recording on our own, we have time to kind of, we had like, we, we basically trade, we didn't have access to the huge sort of Hollywood budget that some bands do. We didn't have recourse to the, to the production team that some bands do. So we basically just, we, we, we traded space for time. <laughs> we're like, we've got 
multiple years to get this ready and to get it right. So let's do it. <laughs> let's use that time. And let's really make this something like we're going to put this out ourselves. This is all us. Whatever, whatever is good about it, whatever is bad about it, it was us that did it. So let's do it right. Let's take the time and let's make sure it's exactly what we want it to be. I agreed. And I think being independent has probably been a blessing in a sense that, um, and I don't know, maybe you can speak to this, but if you were with a label, maybe they will try to change your style to, because, you know, music is sort of cookie cutter-ish, you know, everything is sort right. of got to sound like everybody else. But like I say, they would definitely have a preconception about it. Yeah. Yeah. So. And your sound is so unique um, that, you know, I don't know if it'll work if you were with the label. Um, sure. But, yeah. So. Like, I don't know that we would have been, I don't know that even we would have been able to do exactly what we did right. if we were trying to do it specifically. Right. I think a lot of it, like a lot of the serendipity is a lot of what it is. Just the fact that we kind of, we happens to click in the way that we did and everybody had happens to bring the talents to the table that they did. We just like there, there was no, there was no way that I, that I could have known beforehand that a mere place. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the cash app. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google play store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5 and don't forget to use our referral code. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Keyboard. <laughs> I was like, I'd intro, I'd introduced myself to him over Craig, Craigslist, and we met like in one of the piano rooms at a at the Harold Washington <laughs> Library. <laughs> like, there was no way I could know that he was a music producer, or that we that like the collaboration we would develop would create this. It would help to create this project. And, catalyze something that uh i don't know i don't know that, that we're, we're i think we're all very proud of having been a part of it okay we're um speaking of the music where can uh where can people pick up your your music oh you can find us on all the platforms uh yeah. apple music spotify i think that we're, we're on soundcloud as well and bandcamp okay but yeah we're all right and also mentioned that you also have a youtube channel as well we do that go out there and uh, check out some of the, some of the stuff you have on you have a few singles on your on your on your do we've been trying to yeah that was actually where we put our first kind of our first, if you want to see what we looked like at our very beginnings there's a youtube video of us doing a uh, doing the song it ain't so easy in Dylan our old base like the old bassist's uh, basement <laughs> he's filming it on his phone he's got his sort of his glasses he's got a big smile on his face everybody's very uh, very excited to be down there doing stuff. And of course, our first, our first saxophone is Rochelle. Uh, she's another teamster, so she, she's been working for uh, UPS more recently. And obviously the hours have gotten worse. So we've all, as I say, everybody, everybody's working, working other jobs and we're all kind of struggling in this new economy. That's, you know, it's, it's not really making a space for independent artists in the way that perhaps a more ethical society would, but you right. know, we're, we're making do. Right. Well, you guys are grinding, man. And uh, like I said, um, I think with good music, people are fine. Good music. Um, you guys are doing the Lord's work in that respect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why don't you? Uh, why don't you plug some of your social media uh, connections? Absolutely. We're we're uh, at Barry in the Fountains on uh, on Instagram, on Facebook, the whole the whole shebang. Okay. Um, another question here. What do you hope? Um, what do you hope people get out of your music? How should people would how how do you want people to be remember Barry and the Fountains? So I suppose the so for the great I think we, so with the great extreme we were trying to do something uh, in in writing it I was trying to deconstruct uh, a lot of the emotional emotional uh, things that had happened to me over the course of my life that made a really big impact on me like big big bad relationships basically. And the thing that I took from them that I think was constructive was the idea that if you, if you process these things, if you take the relationship itself for what it is, and don't take that aspect of it too personally, then the emotional aspects of the relationship can still be very useful to you in terms of determining like what you need to do to grow as a person. So like in a relate, my first relate, big relationship was with 
the person who Desiree, the song Desiree is about, her name is not Desiree in real life. But that relationship, I feel, had a really big impact on me. And it wasn't the sort of, like, I hate her now sort of impact. It was like the, it was the kind of impact where I was like, wow, I felt a certain way about this person. Why did I feel that way? How have those feelings influenced me? Did I let it go? When did I let it go? How and why? And I think that's what the song explores. And I think that's what The Great Extreme is trying to explore. And in our new album, the, the, Psalms, for the Psalms for the Deluvian Era, which is about Sumerian mythology, is that concept album we're working on. That, I think, is a more forward-facing kind of album. And it's, it's broadly... So it does, the, the, the new album will have a message, but it'll be kind of a more, a more contemporary message. It's, it's more... I suppose you could say it's more of a story about the present uh, that uses the past. To, to, to tell that story. Okay. So in there. Yeah. All right. And so I just want to, one quick question about Desiree. Um, do you find, or did you find that for whatever reasons they didn't work out? Did you, you find yourself being appreciative of having gone through that experience? Cause that's what I kind of hear you saying when you talk about the writing of that song. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I think absolutely. Yeah. It was like, you, like, I think, like I, 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 I'm friends with the person now in, in, in the modern context, but then uh, at the same time, I think even the, like, even the aspects of it that were uncomfortable at the time, like the bits where I had to deal with my own immaturity and kind of question why, why it was that I needed from someone something that they couldn't give me. <laughs> like what exact, and what exactly that meant for me, what it meant about me, what it meant about them. And I think the growth itself is something you can take from the relationship just the opportunity to get to know yourself better, to get to know other people better and the way that people relate to one another in the world, to, to, to balance and expand one's perspective. I think that's, that's a, a beautiful gift that even people <laughs> that you don't end up staying in a relationship with can give you. Oh, I, I completely agree. Um, well, Barry, I appreciate you coming on the show. Anything else you want to add before, hey, before we... Turn it loose today. I mean, I know it's late in Chicago, but anything else? Oh yeah, absolutely. I just want to, yeah, I just want to say that here, here out in Chicago, like we've got a, I don't know, we have a lot of great music venues, and COVID has been hurting them terribly. Uh, at North Bar, I want to give a shout out to Gallery Cabaret. I want to give a shout out to just all the big venues that really were there for us, kind of in the beginning. Chicago has an amazing independent music scene, and in the wake of COVID, it's going to be changed. It's going to be a fundamentally different thing than it was before, but that doesn't mean it has to be worse. It's, it's going to be different. And I think we can kind of come together to create something really positive if we, if we take the attitude that we're going to save our stages and make them an equitable place for musicians to perform and for Chicago's, for the culture of Chicago to develop. And I think that model can be useful. Like, I think we can draw on the models of other cities and other cities can draw on our model. I think that, the kind of use of, of urban spaces as real cultural incubators is, uh, is an incredibly useful thing. I think musicians and, uh, and creative workers in general tends to kind of downplay their own importance to changing society and freeing it from its fear of freedom. But I think it's an incredibly important part. I mean, music freed me from my fear of freedom and <laughs> I didn't even know I had it. Right. So it's quite a feat. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope that um, that um, whatever change, what there's definitely going to be change. You just mentioned that it's um, I can't see how it cannot be. Um, but hopefully, it makes us better, you know, society wise as well. Um, but Mr. Barry Fontenot, I appreciate you taking the time today, sir. Oh, hey man, thanks again for having me. I'm so glad to be a part of it. Yeah, no problem, man, and that's. Um, yeah, we'll have links on our on our website and also on the show notes on our YouTube channel about Barry and the Fountains and also all their links to social media as well as the links to um, their music. And keep us posted on um, the new release on the 19th. There's a few more days before that happens at the time of taping. Um, Absolutely. But man, I, I think you guys are onto something, man. I do. Thank you very much. Hey, let's let's you and me both try and bring back soul music, right? Most definitely. <laughs> I'm speaking my language. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. That's Barry Fontenot on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, and we'll be right back. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Thank you, sir. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Mr. Barry Fontenoy. You can find out more about Barry on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget to check out their new single called Rose, as well as check out their new album coming out October 19th, 2020, called The Great Extreme. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.